Um, right now, it is time. I've skipped the announcement and have gone... I skipped the announcement of the announcement, and now I'm on to just the announcement. I'm about to kick it over to interview Joe, and I'm going to interview my very special guest, who I will announce here for you in the next couple seconds, but for me, it's going to take like 20 minutes to get everything set up. So by the magic of editing, here is the interview. All right, here we are in the interview. I'm interviewing the very special, very talented, very amazing one third of the half in the bag crew, RJ, who's giving me a very puzzled look. Unfortunately, video yeah, is not. Yeah, you said that I was very talented, so I, you, you must know another RJ. Um, I didn't say it was disc golf. It sure, certainly isn't me. <laughs> I never said oh, it was disc oh. golf. <laughs> oh, hey, oh. hey, you know he does a mean Archer impression. Let me tell you, <laughs> once. Yeah, so uh. this is the very first interview in the series of one interviews that we'll be doing here on the Joe's Disc Golf Podcast. Maybe we'll have another one. Maybe I'll interview Ben. That would be interesting. Oh, would be good. That, that oh, would, he'd, he'd have some good stories for you. He would have a lot of good stories, and I would have to cut a lot down because I, unlike Half in the Bag, my podcast is like an hour or less. Half in the Bag yeah. is at like an hour and a half to two and a half hours. <sighs> And we, people we really still need to listen. Do a better job of cutting it down. Yeah. Um, well, the hard part is like the way we go at things. It just doesn't, you know. It's true. It doesn't well, work. And and Ben and I are, uh, in, in you, especially when you get all three of us together, we're a little bit of um, scatterbrained. What, what's? I was gonna say uh, blowhards. Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say so. <laughs> it's uh, it's just a pretty, wee bit talkative. Ah, just a little bit, and we can get yeah. going. Hey, fortunately, yeah. we haven't gone around in circles yet. That's that's the one thing I'm surprised. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Uh, I guess we'll start out here. What? Uh, who is your daddy, and what does he do? <laughs> Have you not seen Kindergarten Cop? Nope. Oh, there are some people. Nope. Yelling at the screen right now, or yelling at their car <laughs> and, that you have and not seen kindergarten be people cop. going. <laughs> yeah, uh, that seems totally fair. <laughs> it's a mid '90s Arnold Schwarzenegger comedy ish movie. It's it's probably on Netflix or Amazon or something, and it's it's worth a good time. You might want to have a few. You might want to be half in the bag. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, when you watch that, because it is very much it. It's. Arnold Schwarzenegger acting with a bunch of kindergartners. Literally. Like How the name kind of him? encapsulates all of it. <laughs> it's it's funny. That, so that doesn't sound bad. Um with as much snow as we've gotten as you know, it seems like we're just having snow days through the rest of this uh this week. So that might be what one of my projects for tomorrow is to sit down and watch that. Yep. Um you know, we're you and I are both in Northeast Indiana where we've gotten, I don't know what the official measurements are, but today we're at about uh, two heights of my dog. So, so six it's not inches. very tall, but <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it's about a foot and a half or so. Give or take. The hard part is the wind's blowing a lot and this is the lighter mm-hmm. snow. So the drifts are bad. There are parts of my driveway where I had like two inches of snow and another part where I had two and a half feet. Yeah, but I was shoveling today and I had like a, a, you know, probably the not quite knee high, but, you know, kind of upper calf high um, yep. muck boot, you know, muck style boots on. And there were places where my driveway snow was taller than that. Yep. And then places where it was like I was barely leaving footprints. Yep. When I was shoveling, but you're, I, I know that your listeners are here to talk uh, or here to listen to us talk about the weather, though. Oh yes, <laughs> lovely stuff. <laughs> Nothing but the best yes. here. Uh, Joe's Disc Golf Podcast, part of the Joe's Disc Golf Network Podcast Network. I'll get it right one day. Uh, <laughs> anyway, too. So I guess uh, I guess we can start out by saying, when did you start playing disc golf? Or asking, I should say. Yeah, so I guess I kind of have three different points that I, I look back on. Okay. Um, the first one, really before I knew anything about what disc golf was, um, there was a campground that 
uh, my family and I used to go to uh, that had a disc golf course on it. And occasionally we would just take a, fr- you know, one of the basic style Frisbees and we would just throw it. And, you know, we'd probably take six throws to get within putting range. And, you know, so yeah. that was when I was, uh Gosh, maybe middle school, maybe high school, something like that. Okay. No, not even high school. You know, maybe middle school at the oldest, probably closer to elementary school. Um, So, you know, probably third, fourth grade. Yeah. Um, Then when I really first started getting into disc golf, it's probably about 20, somewhere between 2017 and 2019. Well, no, not someone would say 2018 at that point. Yeah. Yeah. 2018, (laughs) um, based on, I think I have trilogy challenge discs from 2018. So that's when I really got my first set of discs. Um, when I first kind of understood this is how we, you know, this is how you actually play disc golf. Yep. Um, and then I really picked it up again, probably the summer of 2020. Um, I, I probably went the better part of a year to a year and a half, maybe even two, two, two and a half years where I didn't really play. Yep. Um, there wasn't really anything convenient. Um, didn't really have a good opportunity to play. Wasn't actively playing. And now I would say that I've really picked it up since middle of 2020. Um, you know, everyone's got a, or got a hobby during the pandemic. And, uh, you know, like a lot of people, I picked up disc golf and, and that's really where I started to, to get more into it. Um, really started to focus on it more as a hobby, more than just what I did going out with my friends, with you, know, you and Ben and yeah. With a handful you know, of discs and a people. six pack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where, where, where my my drink number outnumbered the number of discs I would bring. I thought you were going to say out, outnumber your score, but that uh, we didn't take you to the hospital. <coughs> but then again, Correct. most of our scores <laughs> when we were starting out, woof, 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 yes. less yes. said the better. So. Not all of us can start on a fantastic beginner's course with severely overinflated pars. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, you know, I, I would say that the first couple courses especially around here that we played on they're really good courses but they're if you're just starting friendly. out they're tough they're really yeah. really tough um because either they're excuse me <coughs> oh because either they're really wooded or they're you know fairly long it just makes yep. it hard to for beginners to really get into it. Um, yeah, generally which, I say around here, Shof is probably your best beginner course. The hard part is the holes are long. I want to say the yeah. average is probably right around 300, 275, 300. If you don't count yeah. the six in the woods, because yeah. If, yeah. if you're a new player, don't, don't, just don't. Uh, those yeah, are but, Those are rather tough. And you've got a handful of trees on some holes. Some of them are just wide open where it's like, all right, you know, it's a wide open hole. Now throw it 400 something odd feet, but there's no water Yes. where Sweeney yeah. is a much shorter course, decent amount of trees, not too bad, but there's a lot more water. So if you are someone new, I would avoid that course just because you're most likely going to lose at least one disc on several holes, but yeah. 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 And that's, that's one of my things. Um, you know, even, even to this day, I really shy away from, from open water. Um, yeah. <coughs> excuse but, me. You I know, got something caught in my throat. I mean, most of us um, have a golden retriever, but you have a, uh, Bichon retriever. No, terrier <laughs> retriever. <laughs> A multi poo retriever. Yes. Um, certified by dynamic discs, I should say. Uh, yeah, they, exactly. Uh, they, they retweeted that that tweet that I uh, sent out earlier. Making the big ten. I want to say it was Sunday before I went to my my um, my tournament this week, but yeah, 
Uh, yeah. So what, I guess then, what would be your favorite disc to throw? My favorite disc to throw, um, you know, I'd say it's, it's a pretty easy choice for me. It's the first non putter that I actually bought for myself. <laughs> you need to oh, cut back geez. to two packs a day. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Um, Two, two packs of beer, right? Yes. <laughs> um, but no, for me, it's, it's like I said, the first disc that I actually ever bought for myself, the herb, not the first disc, but the first, um, driver, um, I got in a two disc challenge. It's a lucid air escape. Um, I, I have it beat in real well at this point. It, you know, I, I can, it is my go-to disc for when I want to, shred a course if it is not too windy uh that is the problem with the air plastic um it tends to get (laughs) blown around pretty pretty bad um yeah that air plastic or blizzard plastic or whatever everybody calls their yeah super lightweight stuff yeah it uh it does not handle the wind a headwind or crosswind very well but a tailwind or no wind and that thing will cruise for miles yeah yep um, and actually there was last summer I was playing in a tournament and it was one of like the three holes w- that didn't have a CTP on it, but naturally I, uh, I, I parked it on, on that hole. Um, you know, probably, uh, yeah, I mean, probably yep. within, I mean, literally just a, a dump in the disc type, uh, throw. Um, so. I can understand that. So that's. <laughs> so uh all right so that's that's lucid air escape i have i have an escape myself a regular escape that's a very good disc very reliable um yeah little under yep. i shouldn't say understable uh the it's a little under the touch um, under neutral i'd say yes yes um, uh, i don't want to say i also bag a normal escape um i started doing that again last year um for those headwind shifts. just What's that? Yeah. For, for the windier days or the, um, for the days where I wanted a little bit more stability than my lucid air escape. Yep. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great disc. Uh, it is, it is a very beginner friendly disc, uh, for, for anyone that's getting into it. You don't have to go and get a, a lucid air escape. Like I did. My wife, uh, actually bags two prime escapes. Mm-hmm. Um, from from her starter sets and you know it's it's something that it's is a, a very disc. um yeah it's a beginner disc and it it's not just for beginners but yeah. it's it's one that it I mean, is I've, very I bagged nice one for those nice you know. wood shots for uh mm-hmm. kind of a hyzer flip with a left finish for a backhand if I want yeah. something to you know hyzer flip and stay straight I throw my vandal. Because my Vandal for me is crazy understable. I've also had it since the Trilogy <laughs> Challenge when it came out. I think that was the 2018 that you played. No. Or was it before that? It was that? probably 2019 would be my guess. I didn't play 2019. 2018 was the, uh, was the musket. Might be 2017 then. Yeah, that musket was... Oh, that disc is crazy. So um, I guess then, talking about... Are you thinking flips, of the musket or the patrol? <laughs> God. I hate the patrol. <laughs> I threw that thing vertical. Like I, I let it go. I was leaned over like crazy. I threw it vertical. It flipped up and still flipped over. I've never thrown anything that understable, especially throwing it at, at like I said, it was as v- pretty much vertical and it still f- turned to burn. I, I don't even know how that disc is crazy. Yeah, I I'd, I'd have to guess that's a big reason why it's it's uh, out of production is just it's, it's too, so understable, too for, understable for anyone that uh even for beginners it's it's difficult yeah. to control. Yeah, it's it's a very touchy disc. I I I still bag it. Um there are certain but, like low power shots that it's good mm-hmm. for. Yeah. But it is like I don't I, I'd I rather pull say, out my judge and throw that because that's the time I would pull it out. And and I can trust the judge to, 
hold whatever line and not turn over. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think the two shots that I used it for um, this this last weekend, I actually got myself into a little bit of trouble with both times, but mm -hmm. so be it. It happens. So then yep. what's uh, uh, one part of your game that you're working on for the 2022 season? One part of my game that I'm working for, working on for the 2022 season. Yeah. I would say that my biggest thing is putting. Um, I got a putting or a practice basket. I got the EGA mock shift. Uh, Very good basket. The I bet I have one. Of, of somebody else <laughs> on this uh, interview. In this conversation. <laughs> yes. Um, and so I, I got that out. And I think um, at least so far, the big thing that I've worked on for my game obviously only a month in and thus living in the cold winter climate that we're in. Um, you know, I've been working on my putting uh, specifically just getting a consistent feel for how I approach a putt and how I actually go through a putt. Yep. Um, one of the things that I was really bad about, you know, even through last year was I was very solid on, you know, the 10, 15 foot putts. My problem was that I would kind of hyzer out on a lot of my longer distance putts because mm -hmm. I wasn't releasing flat. Yep. And I, I, you know, even even once I got to 17, 18, 19 feet, I had a lot of trouble getting a consistent aiming point, getting a consistent power. And I would just end up almost flashing the basket with the disc. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's the big part of my game that I have really started working on this year mm -hmm. is just, and, and I started on this a little bit last year when I, I changed my putting stance a little bit. Um, and so just changing how I go through a putt and then, um, you know, basically how I throw, throw my putts. Yep. Uh, and then hopefully once it gets warmer and I finally get a yard, um, yes, actually, yes, yes. Once, once I actually get some grass in my yard, um, hopefully actually being able to practice some longer putts, practice some putts in the wind. Um, because that was another thing last year. I just felt like if it was, you know, even moderate winds, I felt like I just had no confidence going up to hit a putt. Yeah. And that is that is difficult, especially right now, this time of year, practicing only indoors. Although I'm sure yeah. you can set up a fan. Same idea, right? <laughs> yes, yes. But yeah, I mean, putting is definitely something everyone can relate to. And I like to think of it as uh, like a free throw, not necessarily like it should be automatic because, you know, free throws are pretty straightforward. The basket is always exactly 10 feet high. You're always exactly at the same position. Putting isn't, mm -hmm. but you can have a routine that right. gets you in that right. right mindset that gets you like, okay, I always put down my mini. I always step like this. I always do this. And then we mm -hmm. go. Yep. Yeah. And that was, that was one of the big things. Um, I, like, like I said, I played in a tournament last weekend and I signed up for it really last minute. And one of the things that I did I said to get ready for it was to set up my basket and just go through and say, okay, my mini's down, take a step back, take a breath, step up to it, take a, you know, a half step back to, to get my full stance, take a half step over to get my full yep. stance, find the basket till, you know, yeah, go, all that exactly. Stuff. Go through routine, go through the mental game. And it was something that honestly I noticed a difference in even after only a couple times, just having that consistent, this is how I am doing it mm -hmm. was really beneficial to me. Yeah. I, uh, two years ago, I started halfway through 2020. I really started working on my putting as well. And one thing I noticed that I was actually kind of surprised at was once I started getting that routine, once I started getting all that, how easy the 15 footers were. 
mm-hmm. roughly once you got that routine. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, wind, terrain, you know, you're in a bush, whatever. But yeah, generally speaking, I was like, all right, okay, I could do this, and that just confidence just kind of builds, and it's it's a lot of fun there. But yeah, uh, yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, the nice thing about the mock shift is that you can go from you know, full chains to half chains to then. Um, shortened chains and yes, I mean, you, you get different challenges. So even if you're, you can only do 20 footers because that's all the space that you have in your basement garage, whatever. Yep. You can still make that more challenging. You can still, fo- you know, there's still ways that you can, can focus on it. Um, so I guess that's, that's a little plug there yep. for people that are, uh, looking, looking at getting baskets, looking at getting some more practice in. Yeah, I, I recommend the mock shift as well. I will say that I did make the chains skinny and then bring the basket down to the height of a disc. So uh, was that 20 centimeters, give or take? And then I was putting from 20 feet. And man, did I feel terrible. Because <laughs> it was, I think I made out of the 20 I threw at it, I want to say I made like six. And they weren't pretty. I'll say that. But, you know, like you said, I only have 20 feet to work with. I got to make it harder somehow. Otherwise, you know, the circle's going to get bigger whenever the snow melts. <laughs> that's, that's the problem. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that, that's the hard part about living. You know, we, we talk about it. We're, yep. You and I are both from the Midwest. I'm from Indiana. You're from Illinois. We both live in northern Indiana. Yep. Our co-host on Half in the Bag lives and is from uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. It's just, it's difficult. It, yeah. Yeah. We don't, uh, we don't live in Florida. There's we, a reason we, why a lot of these pros are moving to like the big time pros. Now you find them like as far north as Tennessee and that's about it. And they keep mm-hmm. going south. Now you got those regional pros who are, you know, in the Portland ish area or, you know, the upper Northwest or the Northeast where they are regional pros. Yeah. Who still make it on tour, but just for that region. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then you have like everybody else lives South where they can play all year long, basically. Yeah. Or they take their motor home and travel South somewhere. The van life, yeah. live in that van life. But, uh, yes, I am not living down by the life. river. Yes, that is. <laughs> Living in a van down by the river. But um, I don't actually know what that's from. I just know that's a reference. Uh, Saturday Night Live with Chris Farley, uh, David Spade, and Christina Applegate. Uh, all, yes. yes. Now that you mention it, I'm like, yeah, that, that sounds right. Yep. That's that's about it. Otherwise, uh, I think that that does it for this lovely interview. That was 22 minutes, 23 minutes we're going on here. That's pretty well, solid. Like I, like I said, when we started, uh, we get whenever talking. you get two or three of us talking together, conversation doesn't tend to be short. So Generally not, but it was a good conversation. So, uh, RJ, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed for the me. interview. And for all of those listening, you can follow him at Half in the Bag DG on Twitter. There's also halfinthebag.com. And he currently has an article up on Joe's Disc Golf. Is light plastic right for you? I believe was that the right. Uh, that uh, something along something those something along those lines. Talking yes. about the pros and cons of using lighter weight discs. Essentially, yep. yep. As should I you said, or my you? favorite disc is the Lucid Air Escape. Um, I talk a little bit about why it's my favorite disc and why, especially if you're a beginner or someone who doesn't have a big arm like me. It might be something worth considering. Yep. Um, you know, you want to try my and Lucid Air Moonshine Justice? I I would love to try that. It's 159 really grams. Would. Yes, yes. Um, and and as we apparently found out this week, um, you know, light plastic isn't necessarily just for beginners. There are some pros that are are uh, struggling to find it right now. Yep, that's. Um, it's not as popular, and that is uh, that is something I didn't get a chance to talk about. But uh, RJ is also a sports medicine guy, like I am, and uh, Madison Walker is recovering from an injury. I didn't quite know she had 
It sounds Why like she had a, an elbow injury. And per uh. doctor's orders, she has to throw lighter weight plastic. Huh. I did not know that. Yeah, I didn't That's... either until I, I found out a little bit more. Uh, sorry if anybody hears a cat meowing. But uh, Lucy says hi. She is uh, my uh, uh. executive producer. So, so <laughs> you don't have see, to now I'm just that. imagining, as you said, that it's doctor's orders for her because yep. of an injury. Now I'm imagining Simon throwing like 150 gram discs. Oh, geez. That's After why he can throw the tilt year. so far. Uh, <laughs> it's only a 150 yeah, he, gram tilt. That's why he can throw it that far. Oh, yeah. hi, Lucy. My executive <laughs> producer says hi. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. She was on my, uh, camera my briefly. Agent, I think my agent is in sleeping next to the couch. So, yeah. uh, but um, <laughs> so if anybody has any lightweight MVP or streamline, uh, I'm sure if you Google Madison Walker, you'll be able to find the spreadsheet, the Google sheet that she has up online, listing specific discs in specific weights or rough weight ranges that she is looking for. I do not have any of those. The only MVP disc I have is from when I signed up for the PDGA back in 2016. And they gave me uh, a 150 something gram. I think it was a Tesla. I don't know. All I know is it didn't get great mileage. Yeah, I, I think Come I on, have Elon. like a streamlined disc. Um, yeah, brands I'm just somewhere. Not but uh, yeah, oh, yeah, it wasn't something either. I need to make yeah. a correction that I forgot to make. I made it on a different podcast entirely. Lucy, please stop. Is that uh, I believe I said last week on this podcast that uh, Innova made DGA discs. It's actually Discraft who makes DGA discs. So I'll be curious to see what kind of spread that Katrina Allen has in terms of DGA versus Discraft. So, yeah, but I think that about does it up. Um, thank you for stopping by, RJ. Hope you have a thanks for having me. Great evening, a great weekend, and hopefully you survive the snowpocalypse. Uh, we can only hope. I know. I think there's only one or two more rounds of shoveling left, so. No kidding. All right. Have a good